What is up YouTube, Spencer Premier here and in this video I'm going to be showing you the best tips to go 12-0 flawless in Battle Royale and MLB The Show 20 but before we begin I would like to ask you to leave a like and subscribe so let's get into this. So before we get into this video, I do want to say it does take a lot of skill to go 12-0. Just listening to tips does not automatically make you go 12-0. You all know this, it takes a lot of skill to go 12-0. But since we're all home anyways, we have a lot of time to practice the game and just do whatever we want. So we can get our skills up so we can go 12-0. So we can get our skills up and it'll help us towards going 12-0 in Battle Royale. So as you guys can see, I just did hit silver in MLB The Show 20. So I have been grinding and getting better at the game. But anyways, I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get into these tips right now. So as you all know, MLB The Show did change their pitching format. So now you can choose what pitcher you want to pitch. So that changes everything in Battle Royale when you are drafting a team. Because you want to draft at least three good pitchers. And when I say three good pitchers, you're going to want to have at least one diamond pitcher. I'm not saying it has to be a starting pitcher, but at least one type of pitcher. Maybe even a closer or a relief pitcher. But I prefer starting pitcher. But anyways, in the first round, if you get Reggie Jackson, you're obviously going to take him because he's 99. Just look at his stats. I have him on my own team because I hit silver but that's our first pick now these next few rounds is totally opposite of last year what you would want to do in your first rounds is just stack up your starting pitching with a bunch of trash pitchers and like common pitchers but that's not what you're going to want to do this time this time you're going to want to put your bronze and commons in your bullpen and then you're going to want to stack your starting pitching i'm not saying to make your bullpen trash but at least have like two good bullpen players maybe even a diamond if you want to throw one in there but i prefer starting pitching but darren o'day i know it's a cheesy side armor so i'm going to pick him for my one good bullpen player we're probably going to pick another one, but we do need a few lefties. And there we go, guys. In the third round, we get 94 Billy Wagner. I'm obviously going to pick him. He's the highest overall by far, and he's a good pitcher. So I do prefer starting pitching, but if they're going to give us this guy, then we're obviously going to take him. Now right here is our first gold player round. We have Carlos Correa, Rod Carew, Edwin Diaz, and Mike Clevenger. And I think I'm going to go with Mike Clevenger just to start out the starting rotation. So now moving on to the next round, we have Felix Hernandez, Mitch Moreland, Nico Goodrum, and Anthony Santander. And Nico Goodrum has good defense, but he does not have good hitting, so I'm not going to take him. I think I'm going to take King Felix, because it is okay to have, like, two players that are not the best. I know Felix is good, or he's, like, in the back end of his career in real life. But it's okay to have a few bronzes in your pitching rotation, but you want to have at least two or three good pitchers that you can count on to have every game. Now moving on to this next round, we're going to pick another starting bronze pitcher, because I do not want to take any of these players from my lineup. I just don't want to do it. Now we're moving on to our silver players, and I automatically see Miguel. Andujar, and I know he is gold hitting and he's a third baseman so I'm just gonna take him to start out our team we already have Reggie Jackson but that is a good third baseman to have maybe not defensively but offensively also another tip you want to balance your team out you don't just want to have a bunch of stacked hitters because then you're gonna have no defense you do have to balance out the defense and offense I would suggest having about like six good hitters and three good fielders or two good fielders because the pitcher at least two good fielders and I prefer your center fielder being really good if you like Byron Buxton or something and probably your shortstop too and those other positions like right left and second base and first base and third base you do not have to focus on as much but especially shortstop and center field and maybe even catcher I would really focus on good defense there now this next round is a common round and I'm just gonna take Adam Simber because I don't want to put a common in my lineup and I don't want to use any more starting pitcher spot so now looking at this next round, it is a silver round, but I want to focus on my lineup now. We've already drafted a lot of pitchers, and I don't want to get to the point where we're out of good players, and then I have to end up drafting like a bronze player to fill out my lineup. So we're going to pick Salvador Perez. I do like his stats. He has 82 power. They're not like the greatest stats, but I will take it for now. Robbie Cano does have diamond defense, but it's only at second base, so we don't really need diamond defense there. I'd rather have a good hitter, and I don't want to draft another starting pitcher, so we're going to get Perez. So in the last round, I also skipped over it and I picked Jock Peterson 78 overall. I was in the debate if I wanted Starling Marte or Jock Peterson but I ended up picking Jock because I wanted another lefty on my team and he has 90 power so I will definitely take that. Now this game is not being good to us right now. It is only giving us our bronze rounds so I do not want to fill out a roster with bronze players and the only position there is is starting pitcher but I do not want to take that so I'm going to have to take a bronze player. So let's see what the best stats are. We have gold defense for Brandon Crawford. You know what? No, he has common hitting though. I really do not want common hitting. 
but I think that's what we're gonna have to take we're gonna have to go with Crawford and if we get a better shortstop later yeah guys do not be afraid to wait until your last five rounds for bench players to get somebody to replace someone that you put on your lineup because you do not want to screw yourself with bad pitching because you went after one player and then you screwed yourself three rounds later because you have to end up with bad pitching now looking at this next round there's a 79 overall Eddie Murray first baseman and he is a switch hitter with gold heading that is a bonus on top of that so I definitely think I'm gonna go after him it would be nice if they would give me another lefty for my bullpen just for situational stuff but they're not gonna do that I'm gonna take him now moving on to another silver round and I see 79 overall Kenta Maeda and I'm going to take him just to add some good pitching in our starting rotation because we do need a few pitchers like I said at the beginning of the video so now we are moving on to another gold round and it looks like I'm gonna take Robbie Cano here because he does have decent hitting not the best silver hitting but I do want that diamond defense and I did talk about balancing out your hitting with defense and we do have a bunch of pretty good hitters especially Reggie Jackson so we're gonna take Robbie Cano this round so I did just skip through two rounds. I thought I was recording, but it turns out I wasn't. But anyways, we drafted David Price to round out the starting rotation. We do need at least three pitchers now because we drafted two bronze players. So we did especially need three pitchers because that's going to help us out in the long run because our pitchers are going to run out of stamina. So we're going to need at least three. That's why I suggested three. I also drafted Brian Workman, a 76 overall, to add to the bullpen. So now our bullpen is completely done and we are moving on to our roster. So now in this round, I see Byron Buxton, and he does have diamond defense and 97 speed, so he's definitely a good leadoff hitter. We're just going to bump with him and try to get on base, and I think it's going to work out, so I'm definitely going to take him, and that is going to round out our roster, and we do have a balanced roster now. We have good hitting and good fielding, and I think we're going to be in it for a good run. Now for your bench, you're just going to want to draft the best hitters available, so Wilmer Flores for this Browns run. Joey Gallo, let's go. That is going to be great. I'm going to replace him with Jock Peterson, and then we're going to move Jock Peterson to the bench so we have a good hitter on the bench. That is going to work out perfectly. Now for these last two bronze players, I'm just going to draft this guy because he has gold defense, so if we need to make a substitution, and then I'm just going to draft Willie Mays because I don't really care about that round. Anyways, guys, now getting into the lineup, I did substitute Joey Gallo for Jock Peterson just to add more hitting to our bench and to our lineup. Obviously, it was just the right move to make. But anyways, for setting your lineup tips, what you want to do is put your fastest runner batting first obviously unless he's like a really good hitter I would bat him second or third but Buxton is not we're just gonna bunt and try to get him on base now when I say your best hitter needs to bat third if he's like a really good power hitter you can also put him fourth it's up to you so I'm gonna put Joey Gallo fourth because just look at that power I don't even have to say anything else 104 and 102 Another tip when setting your lineup, you don't want people batting from the same side, batting right next to each other. Unless it's only like two, then it's fine because I have Reggie Jackson and Joey Gallo, and I want that to stay that way. But you would not want, like, I cannot do this. You would not want three people because that makes it obvious, and the other person is just going to put in a lefty from their bullpen, and you're pretty much screwed. Maybe not screwed, but it's a lot harder to hit that way. Also another tip, you're either going to want to put a switch hitter or a really good contact hitter batting second because say Byron Buxton gets on for me, he's going to steal and get to second. Then I'm trying to hit a ground ball to move him to third. And then once he's in the third, he's in scoring position and all you have to do is hit a pot fly and that's an easy run right there. That's my game plan. That is my main tip for this video is just how to score more runs and how to win more games to go 12-0. But anyways, I do really like how my lineup is set up. We have a good leadoff hitter, a good second hitter, who I think is going to put the ball in play a lot because he's a switch hitter, so it's going to make it easier to hit with him. Then we, of course, have Joey Gallo and Reggie Jackson, or Reggie Jackson and then Joey Gallo, obviously. I don't know why I mixed that up. But anyways, we have Miguel Andujar batting fifth, Cano sixth, Salvador Perez seventh, and then Brandon Crawford eighth, and he is not the best hitter on our team, obviously. He's probably the worst, to be honest. That's why he is batting eighth. But it's fine because he does make up for it with his gold defense at shortstop and that is a really good position to have gold defense at but anyways i'm going to show you my first game in battle royale and then i'm going to end the video but i hope you enjoy these tips let's get into the game so when you first start the game, every single game, you need to warm up your bullpen because anything can happen. You don't know when you're going to have to take your starting pitcher out. So it's only a three inning game, so just warm up your best pitchers. And do not use your best pitcher every single game because you're going to get him tired. That is another tip I have. But anyways, we are batting with Byron Buxton first. We're going to try to bunt the ball. And if we do get 0-2, we're going to have to hit a grounder. So we do get the bunt down, and that is a perfect bunt. And he bobbled it, and we get on base. So that is pretty much an easy double right there because I'm going to easily steal here unless something happens and we do get out. But we should be on second base after this um, next pitch. I'm obviously going to be stealing here. 
I did not mean to go there. I accidentally swung, but we do get to second base, so now all we have to do is make contact and we move him to third. Oh, I did not mean to swing at that. That was not a good pitch to swing at. All we needed to do there was hit the ball, but we ended up not hitting it. We hit it hard, but we are a little bit early on these. No, that is so annoying. Good and good, and we lined right to him. That is super unlucky. And we popped it up. Man, I was really hoping to score a run there because we did get our man on first, Byron Buxton, but we did not. So we're going to have to shut him down pitching. He's going three. Oh, why do I have meter on? Why Bruh. do I have meter on? I didn't mean to do that. I need to turn it off. Apparently my settings got reset. I usually don't play with meter on. That is my bad. We gotta change that right now. That is, oh, that is so bad. Well, if you guys know why I lost if I do lose this game by one run, because I couldn't get the guy home when I automatically got Byron Buxton on first and I didn't have my meter on. So that is two excuses right there that I did not want to have to make, but I am making right now. Uh, we're going to try to get him inside here. And we do strike him out. Unfortunately, we did have to give up a run because I forgot that I didn't take my meter off. And I am not used to using meter. I haven't used it since day one, basically, since I took it off. So that is why they scored their first run. Now we put a submariner in, and he got me lunging on the first pitch with the relief pitcher. Oh, he has Darren O'Day in. No wonder. And he popped me up. My PCI was just a bit off. I did have another good swing timing. I have my swing timing down, but I do need to work on my PCI skills a little bit. All right, so we made an error, but I think we're gonna get him out of first and we do. So that's gonna work out a little bit. I would have liked to got the second. I would have liked to got the lead runner out. All right, we get him to pop up. That's an easy catch for Buxton. We'll see if he tags. Probably not with 21 speed. And we allowed a home run. So right there is probably when I should have put Billy Wagner in because it would have been lefty-lefty. But like I said, I'm not the greatest player. I'm just giving you tips on how to draft your lineup. I'm not the greatest in-game player to be looking after. But we do get the last batter to pop out. That is good, he had 99 speed, so at least he's not on base. But we did have to give up a home run that I did not want to give up. And we should have put in Billy Wagner in that situation because it would have been lefty-lefty, but I didn't because I'm dumb. All right, we hit that one pretty well. But it looks like it's gonna be warning track power, of course. And I was just a bit late on that one. I guess I was early somehow, but that's going to be warning track power again. That is super annoying. That happened twice already. Now we got Buxton up. Hopefully we can pull off another bunt. I did not want to pop that up. Get down. Oh, it dropped. It dropped. That's going to work out. Let's go. Now we got Eddie Murray batting. And we drove that one. That one's gone. So we're back in the game. And now we have our best hitter batting. And that is a base hit. We will take that. So I guess another home run and we will be in the lead. Denied. And of course. But we did get back into the game. But now that I think about it, it would still be tied if I had my meter on. But I don't want to make excuses. That pretty much wraps up the video. I definitely could have won that video easily. But I am not the greatest player, like I said. I do need to improve my skills. And it is really hard to go 12-0. But I definitely would use these tips personally if I was trying to go 12-0. I just had a bad first game. But anyways, that about does it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Turn on the bell so you don't miss more videos. And with that being said, I'm out.